nowadays, like when it comes to multi-classing, they'll pretty much, as long as you meet a prerequisite for the stats, uh, they'll basically let you do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> I think when I look at multi-classing rules for 5e, it's basically like, uh, yeah, you can take this as long as like you have a 13 in intelligence. Do you have a 13 in intelligence? Yes, you can do it. <laughs> you just start taking levels in that. Okay. couple weeks back, I uh, mentioned that it's just weird that we never talk about D&D. &D. Bruno? Uh, Bruno? Uh, no, I used to talk about Bruno all the time when the movie came out. You'll remember oh, that. Yeah. The whole segment on it. But Yeah, we had to edit it because someone left way too many parts of that song in it and it got uh, slapped. Which I don't understand because it was like all under five seconds, but whatever. Just a couple weeks ago, I was mentioning that we don't talk much about D&D &D 3E. Yeah. Because we mostly talk about 3.5. Mm -hmm. Then not a lot of people talk about 4, but then we talk about 5. <laughs> it's like 3.5 and 5 are the most discussed D&Ds that are really out there. You didn't really play... Uh, edition 3, you played 3.5, correct? Yeah, I didn't really play any 3. Okay. Um, I think it started in 3.5, so... Okay, and you hadn't played earlier versions, like... No, I, I had maybe. not. Okay, so really 3.5 was your entry point. Yeah. Um, and the, I can understand why a lot of people feel that way, because, like, if you think about it, so 3rd edition was released in the year 2000. In the year 2000. And then 3.5 came out in 03. So there was only a three year period between when 3rd launched and when we get 3.5 rules. Yeah. So there, there is a very small window. Like by comparison, 3.5 was there for a long time. Even 4 was there for like six years or something. Earlier versions way longer than even that. But I thought it would be interesting to kind of like look back a little bit about what 3E actually did in a Delving Deeper. I watched some videos and I looked at a couple different threads about it and I thought I would just talk a little bit about what it actually did in pers you know, in terms of what it changed from AD&D &D and uh, essentially I think why 3.5 ended up getting <laughs> getting picked up afterwards. So a few basic notes. Um, some things that 3E actually did over earlier versions. Um, we got the return of both the half-orc and the monk class. They came back. They had been dropped. Half-orc class? No, half-orc as a race and okay. monk as a subclass. Sorry. sorry well, you, as, as you said half-orc and monk class. I oh, was sorry. like, I didn't know the half-orc was a class. Sorry. I, I know that in earlier versions there were, uh, you know, like Elf was a class or something, but yeah. But uh, half orc came back as as a race that you could play, and a monk came back as a class that you could play, which were not in the like previous edition. So that that came back. This was also the edition where barbarians and sorcerers were introduced. So they were not around before this in, in before previous... three five three. Three. Oh, sorry, third sorry, edition. Sorry. Third edition. Third edition added those two as subclasses, okay. which are, just, are just ubiquitous. Check. Yeah, yeah. No, we're talking about three E specifically right now. Okay. Just talking about what three third edition added. This was also the new skill point system that was not just proficiency rules from two E. And you're probably familiar with that skill system because that didn't change much from three to three point five. But the idea that you actually had points that you could put into individual skills see we don't really have that in five but you know no no uh yeah i enjoyed it uh in three and three point five skill points were fine uh yeah. proficiency bonus that we have in five is a lot easier of course yes yes but this was this was the point where really all of your skills really depend determined like what you could do <laughs> um, and that's that's a very interesting idea i do actually like that because you get to choose like some different things that you think you're going to be better at. Uh, this was also where they put in some new multi-classing rules. Uh, because in previous editions, you had to decide at the beginning of character creation what you were multi-classing into. And this time, you just had to meet the prerequisites. Uh, so, like, you had to have a strength that was high enough, uh, some of them where you had to have specific feats or classes or something in order to get prestige classes, etc. 
Um, but this is really where they made the multi-classing rules a little bit uh, easier, so you didn't have to do that all up at the front when you built the character to start. Prestige classes, that was also something that came in in 3E. I don't really think we do that now in 5. No, they kind of did away with that. I don't know if they were in 4 at all, but they're not really a thing in 5. Your character just retires at level 20. They just they just retire at level 20, yeah. And Do you know much about prestige classes? I, I know a little bit from when I was doing the research, but my understanding is that if you have certain prerequisites, you can start going along a, a specific line that's like in addition to the class that you're in. Is that what Yeah, so some prerequisites were like the ability to cast certain level spells of a certain type, mm. like arcane or divine. Um, maybe it was a, a, a feat as a prere uh, prerequisite or a race as a prerequisite for like a dwarven defender. Right. But essentially it was uh, just kind of a not a full class typically. It was either five or ten levels usually sure. that would give you different abilities and skills and like magic or whatnot uh for instance one of my favorite ones was the rage mage rage mage rage mage and this nice. was you had to both be able to cast spells of a certain level and have the rage class feature oh okay because back then barbarians could not cast magic oh. like you cannot use magic while you're raged so basically, barbarians could not use magic. Rage Mage was a specific prestige class that allowed barbarians to use magic while they were raging. Great. Yeah, terrifying. Terrifying. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Uh, so, um, so was that something that you had to do after you reached level 20 and you wanted to take additional No, classes? you could do them whenever you, you met the prerequisites. Oh, okay. Okay. Whenever you meet the um, prerequisites. One of the other things with multi-classing in 3 and probably 3-5, probably mm -hmm. 3, I know in 3-5, was that if you were multi-classing, you had to keep them pretty close in level. Okay. Or you got an XP penalty. Oh, Okay. So if you went like one level in one and then seven in another, if you wanted to keep leveling, you, I don't remember the specifics, but there was a bit of an XP penalty for you. Nowadays, like when it comes to multi-classing, they'll pretty much, as long as you meet a prerequisite for the stats, uh, they'll basically let you do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> I think when I look at multi-classing rules for 5e, it's basically like, uh, yeah, you can take this as long as, like, you have a 13 in intelligence. Do you have a 13 in intelligence? Yes, you can do it. <laughs> you just start taking levels in that. Okay. Much less restrictive now. But there are really two big, 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 big things that 3e introduced. Uh, one of them was the actual D20 system because they you know yes. they've used d20s before but this was everything ability checks to attacks all done with a d20 and higher was better and in previous systems you didn't really know if rolling low or high was what you wanted to achieve here <laughs> um, you didn't know if it was good if i got like a one on a die or if i got the highest value on the die because it, it changed depending on what you were doing but this is where they standardized it d20s for, like, all of your stuff, your assorted stuff, and it is better if you get a higher number. Much easier to understand, and uh, in congruity with that, they also established the open gaming license. Which they just recently... There was a whole to-do <laughs> about it, yeah. but sounds like we actually have an OGL2 essentially now, but... Uh, but this is where the the original open gaming license came in, where third party uh, developers could use that D20 system uh, in order to make uh, subsequent content for D&D. Uh, &D. Those were the two really big things that happened in 3E. And I was trying to get just like a basic list of some of the changes that took place there. And I, I couldn't find so much of a video, but I was able... Uh, to find uh, someone who gave a, a pretty comprehensive list from their experience. 3.5 ended up making a lot of tweaks to character classes. Um, they started to do a lot with skill changes and feats that were changed. And I thought I would give you a few because since you didn't play 3, you might be interested in a few of these. I'll, I'll see if yes. I, I'll tell I you. Yes. I know there was one that had to do with a typo on a weapon in the in the 
the description of it saying it did it's 1d63. A wizard? Oh. <laughs> it was a weapon. I think it was the sap. I thought you were talking about the wizard instead of damage, where they did the auto, the, the uh, autocorrect change. No, to it wizard. was, I think it's, a, uh, I think it was the sap instead of doing 1d6 damage. Mm. I did 1d63. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can explain to you some of your favorite classes. And, uh, okay, sure. Druid. So, Druid Animal Companions advance as the Druid levels up now, making the Druid more playable. Druids were given more uh, access to, to more spells than before. So, kind of limited, and uh, that's not how companion characters <laughs> Uh, Rangers received a hit die increase, more skill points, favored enemy, and animal companion also received large revisions for the class, which may say making it playable. That's a good way yeah. to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think the ranger currently in 5e has an animal companion anymore. Depending on the subclass that you take. Because there, yeah. there is I don't know, one. They, did, they did away with the animal companions uh, largely. I think there's one that's like a warden class where you Maybe, get one probably. specifically. The clerics were then allowed to spontaneously cast cure and inflict spells of the mass variety. Couldn't do that before. Oh. Uh, so there's there's something. Sorcerers allowed to make small revisions to their spells known when they level up, which we still can do in 5e now. Wizard spells, specialization was changed, familiar stat bonuses were changed as well. This is where I thought it was really interesting, though. Skill changes. This, this is neat. So, alchemy was rolled into craft alchemy. Animal empathy was removed from the game, and instead, ranger and druid now get the skill as a class ability. Innuendo which before was used to covertly pass messages along, was rolled into the bluff skill. There you go. Perfect. We don't need that as we, its own we skill. We don't need innuendo. Uh, intuit direction was rolled into survival as a skill. Perform was rolled into its own skill, which works similar to craft and profession skills. Read lips was removed from the game and rolled into yeah. spot. Ride is no longer specific, to different mount types. I'm thinking about that. Wait, did they make rides specific to the kind of mount that you wanted to use? Okay. They might have. Uh, apparently they did. Uh, pickpocket, that got rolled into sleight of hand. Scry was removed and now only relies on the spell. Uh, <laughs> wilderness lore was rolled into survival. Also, feet changes. So expertise was renamed to combat expertise. Ambidextrous and two-weapon fighting were rolled into each other so that two-weapon fighting provides the benefits of both feats. Shield expert was rolled into the feat improved shield bash. The feat improved critical was changed to not allow stacking with other critical range enhancing spells. And then when it came to spell changes, ton were added. <laughs> Just probably a, don't need to go over all of them. Maybe I, some notable ones if there I are some. I won't. Let me see if I can give you some that are probably the more useful ones. Uh, Acid Splash was added to the game. Um, we had a lot of greater and mass sort of ones, like Cure Moderate Wounds got a mass version, Cure Critical Wounds. Uh, basically, a lot of these are mass. Also, like Long Strider, Morden came as Prime Sanctum, Owl Wisdom. We also had some that were changed or removed. Uh, so, for instance, uh, like animal friendship and emotions. Emotion, hate, or friendship, or fear apparently got removed. Okay. And you had some basic name changes, like uh, charm person or animal became charm animal. Circle of doom became inflict light wounds. There's a few different things that they did. Also, just damage reduction changes. Uh, it was changed to allow different things to bypass damage reduction. Like special materials, silver, adamantine. Yep, um, silver, adamantine, uh, cold iron. Some equipment changes. I don't have to go over uh, all of that. They made a lot, a lot of changes to 3.5 to try and make it much uh, simpler and more cohesive than 3 was. Uh, so that it was easier to understand and more comprehensive. And I think that's why they came out with 3.5 as quickly as they did. And why we don't talk about 3E as much. 
because when it comes down to it, I even saw one, I was gonna watch a video where they were like, we're gonna make a 3E character sheet, and it's like, great, show me the 3E character sheet, and as soon as as they started talking, it was like, well, actually a 3.5E character sheet, because nobody uses 3, and it's like, thanks. <laughs> I guess Because they had watching. innuendo in there. Yeah, it had innuendo in there, exactly. I was just always kind of curious as to why 3 never gets brought up in the conversation, because, I mean, they did do a lot of important things with that edition that would translate across, you know, further editions. But I think it got surpassed so quickly by 3.5, and then 3.5 was used for so long. Yeah, that, and then 4 was not. <laughs> yeah, it's, people still use 3.5 after 4 was out, and a lot of people didn't even convert over until 5th edition uh, to, to move away from 3.5, and a lot of people still th play 3.5, but you don't see... And a lot see, of people switch straight to Pathfinder. I hope that that kind of gives a little bit of clarity for anybody who was interested in it, like I was, uh, to kind of give an idea of why we just don't talk about Bruno or 3E anymore, for that matter. <laughs> Copyright. Yeah, copyright, exactly. The OGL. We need an open gaming license for Bruno.